And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup, and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod Rick Maxa. He's back in the world headquarters here. Let's Talk Hookup right next to the San Diego Landing in Point Loma. We have a great guest for you today, Captain Gavin Harbour from the Pacific Queen and Captain's Concepts. We're going to be talking some fishing today with one of the top guys in the fleet. So you stay tuned. This is Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Monday 1090. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it. So what's holding you back? It's a fact. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. Fishdope.com is for everyone. Whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat, or a sport boat, Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use the special code to save $20 on a new fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. Saturday, November 6th, it's Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego, and it's our largest sale ever. Plenty of seminars by saltwater experts, over 20 reps from tackle manufacturers like Shimano. Come check out the Shimano Talica, the pinnacle of lever drag to speed reels. The Talica features Shimano's Hagani body to prevent misalignment of moving parts under the heaviest loads. When throwing jigs, the Shimano Trinidad is your top choice. For the best ever tackle bargains, check out Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 6th. One of the dream trips for most anglers is Alaska. There are so many lodges, how do you make a choice? It's easy. Choose the one most Let's Talk Hookup listeners return to time after time. Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, and the finest charter captains in Sitka. All for the ultimate value. One visit and you will understand why nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. Sitka is famous for some of the best runs of salmon in Alaska. And if giant Alaskan halibut is your target. The expert captains at Kingfisher Charters know the hot spots and can put you on a fish of a lifetime. Plenty of rockfish and huge ling cod are there too. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. It's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except tips. It is truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136 or check kingfishercharters.com. Hookup! Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Going to be a great show today. Fun having Gavin here, man. Yeah. Talk about a guy. I don't know how you were able to peel this guy off the water. We talk about so many fishes every day. But that's going to be a lot guy, of fun. First time in the world headquarters here. Good morning, Gavin. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Great, great to have great you, to and have great to have you back, Ricky. A great, great. Uh, Shogun Trip uh, report yesterday, and we'll get more into that later. Yeah, we had a great time. Uh, yeah, well. really, really, uh, such a great, great boat, that and great crew, and great trip. And operation is yeah. so killer. And, yeah. and was that your first time to Guadalupe? Uh, uh, on the Shogun, it was. Oh, Shogun, uh, yeah, been I've been to Guadalupe many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Times. but um, but yeah, first uh, yeah. first time Such going a cool on the. Place to actually, not the first time going on the Shogun, but first time going on the Shogun with Renee. Um, with Renee, right? But uh, but yeah, a great a great time for sure. It was awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. A great a great trip and a really really fun group of people. Like that trip is sold out. I, I think it's it's probably darn near sold out already. Like, oh, it is. It, it is it's like already a, sold out it, for twenty. It, it's like a true. 
90 percent repeat oh, I, mean, yeah. I, I got on the boat and i was like the stranger like everyone was like old homies and like oh, yeah, they're looking yeah. at me like who's this guy you know yeah. <laughs> like, it was uh, it was fun like honestly everybody i got on the boat and everybody's like, where's pete like this is this is our trip of pete like pete pete rooms with eddie like what's going on here you know it was, it was pretty fun so yeah we had, we had a great time we'll certainly talk more about it in the show but, yeah. uh, but a, a great trip yeah no, no fantastic and uh great to have gavin here good morning Morning, guys. How you uh, doing? Now, wait a minute. The, the Pacific Queen's not at the dock. Who's running the boat? Billy's on the boat right now. I, I just talked to him a little bit ago. They should be getting tied up in the next hour or so. Okay. Yeah. And, and how'd they do? Um, it was all right. You know, this, this is kind of the first round of trips since we had that big yeah. storm beginning of next week, you know, so everyone's kind of nervous this time of year. You know, water gets shooken up. But uh, the first day I talked to them, they had pretty good fishing on big ones. Didn't catch a bunch. I think they had... 15 bigger ones or something fish over 100 pounds or something you know so if, not oh, a, oh didn't yeah. not too much i was gonna say hey, hang on for a second let me let me just, just butt in here like this guy's opinion of not a bunch and big ones is a little skewed you yeah know what I mean? after the season yeah. after the season and years that they have been putting forward you have 15 big ones is just like ah, oh, yeah you know it was a little slow but they got them <laughs> No, I mean, fit, what I meant I was not I, a I, bunch of fish. You know, they yeah. had uh, no smaller fish, but I'm everything kidding, they caught was, was was bigger ones. But, you know, it, it's it's a good sign for after the wind, you know, to, that there's still fish around. He said there was really good sign. They were around fish all day. Um, I think yesterday it was a little slower, but he said, you know, water conditions improving right away. After the storm, you know, the water took a big hit. I think it was down to like 63 degrees or wow. something. Yeah. Before the wind, we were fishing in 67, 68 degree wow. water. So. But uh, he said... Yesterday, you know, they didn't. They, I think they had a slower day yesterday, but the water conditions were looking better. Water was cleaning up. Water was warming up. So, still, you know, good sign of fish around. So I'm sure we'll... And I mean, you would know better than anybody, but uh, th- that seems to be one good thing about bluefin is it's not like a, it's not a necessity hot water <clears throat> fish. I mean, that that fish is fine in that temperature water. That's just the the shakeup is a, is a big deal. I mean, the fact that it changed that much, but the the temperature itself isn't what would necessarily scare you off. Yeah, exactly. Bluefin are probably out of all, everything that we fish for. I'd say bluefin are probably the hardiest when it comes to water. You know, we've had excellent bluefin fishing in sixty degree water all the way to seventy five degree water. You know, I don't I don't think the temperature matters as much as just the big you know five degree temperature change in, right. in a couple of days. You know, it's kind of got them shook up. The fleet was off of them. You know, everybody was tied up, so no one knows where they went. It, a lot of times, you know, it. it I'm not worried that we're not going to catch fish the rest of the year. It just takes a little bit sometimes for them to kind of get back settled in and we can get back on them. So. And I, I would think, I mean, I would take, you know, one day of getting 15 of those good ones. I mean, I would take that as a total win. I mean, just the fact that, like you said, you, you don't know. After you're not, that storm, hey, you're not driving you right know. to them. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, and, and he, uh, one thing that was different was before we were, we were catching a lot of fish on, on the kite during the day, which is awesome. But he said this trip out of, the 20 big ones they had, they only had one or two kite fish. No oh, kidding. Yeah, okay. so, it, you know, a lot better chance as an angler to, right. to, to hook fish on your own. You know, they said they had sinker rig fish. They had, you know, flat fall fish at night. He said they, were, they had some lure fish during the day. So, you know, as an angler, you know, probably a better chance of hooking and landing one on your own tackle right That's now cool. than, than before the wind when it was a lot of kite fish. When you say lure fish during the day, are you talking like flat fall fish? Yeah, flat okay. falls. The, the same kind of lures you'd be using at night, you know, but... Yeah. but uh, I, you know, for me and for us, we like to kind of finesse them up a little bit, use a little bit smaller jigs, a little bit lighter tackle for the daytime. But same concept, same exact yeah. concept. So what <clears> is <throat> it about the Pacific Queen and you guys just – you guys just <clears throat> get them. I mean, you're just like the, the highliners of the fleet uh, consistently. <laughs> what, what What's your secret? I don't I don't think it's maybe really any one thing. You know, I think we, we got the same crew that's been on the boat for a long time. You know, we try really, really hard every single day, no matter what's going on. You know, we're, we're, we're trying super hard. And, uh, you know, the crew wants to catch fish. I want to catch fish. Uh, we have a really good clientele of passengers, you know, that come out often and they, they have nice tackle and they, 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 you know, we want it. Everybody pretty much that fishes on the Pacific Queen wants to fish for bluefin. So we're, we're doing it a lot. You know what I mean? We're yeah, out on the yeah. bluefin grounds all the time. It's like yeah. good fishing breeds, good <clears throat> fishing. Like you, you have a fisherman that wants it, that, that goes the most. He wants to go with the guy that catches the most and he has the best gear and, you know, you guys aren't bailing out because it's slow and going to fish a yellowtail kelp. Like, you're going to catch big ones. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with going sure. and doing that. Not, not, nothing wrong with that at all. Just, you know, for for me and for, you know, my passengers and the crew, like, I, I know what they want to do. So, you know, there's sometimes when we go out where I'm like, man, we could go do this. And it would be easy and we would probably catch a bunch of fish. But, you know, these guys want to go try for this. So that, let's go do it. You know, some of our really, really good trips have, have been, you know, especially bluefin fishing when it's really slow for a couple of days and, you know, guys start trying to do other things and we get a group of people that are like, we don't care. 
we want to fish for bluefin no matter what. Stick it out, and we go out there, and we have you know phenomenal fishing sometimes. That's yeah. cool. So typically day and a half trips. Yeah, we do. We have a we, the last couple of years we've been doing a lot of three day trips. Oh, okay. We have a lot of three days. I would say our, you know we have a, a lot of day and a half trips and a lot of three days. We have a few in between. You know we have a, we run a few overnights to fill in the gaps and we have a couple two days and this and that. But most of our most of our trips that we do are going to be day and a half and three day trips. Okay. And how did you happen <laughs> on to the uh, yeah, what's Pacific the story Queen? Like? What's your what's your, what's your history in this fleet? Is actually. Pretty lucky, really. You know, I worked on the Sea Venture 80 for a while when I was younger. I ran that boat for about a year and a half. And um, I think it was back in, like, 2015. You know, fishing was super good. And I just got to a point over there where I, I needed a change, you know. Um, and really to the point where I was loading bait on, on the Sea Venture 80, and I said, the next boat that ties up next to us at the bait receiver, I'm going to go ask him for a job. <laughs> and, no and it was the Pacific Queen, yeah. Wow. Get out of here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how it happened. Pretty that crazy. Was, that <laughs> was uh, Drew's lucky day. You yeah. can yeah. say yeah. that for sure. Yeah, so it, it was it was super lucky, but I'm glad with what's going on. That's yeah. Fun. And was that, was that when Drew was the sole owner of the boat? Uh, yeah, Drew was running the boat. He had Joe uh, night driving for him, and mm-hmm. Joe was his relief operator. And I kind of knew Joe from like friends of friends, you know. So sure. I think at the time, I don't. Drew didn't even hire me. Joe hired me. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. That's it's like, cool. come on over here, and now you've been running pretty. You've been basically the the chief operator for how long? Now? Yeah, I've been and owner. I've been running oh, an owner too. Yeah, I've been running the boat okay full time since I think 2016. All right. And I think I don't. I think it's been about three and a half years now that I've been part owner with Drew of the boat oh. as well. Oh, okay, three, great. Three, well, congratulations. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. You. Well, well deserved too, because you've been working hard, right? Yeah, yeah. spent a lot of time on the boat. <laughs> yeah, spent a lot. Of time. We were joking about it after the show, but it's the same thing. I, I I remember when you know when Gavin was Drew's relief, and then like I can remember like being in the shop <laughs> and hearing the you know hearing the customers coming up to the counter. I mean, again, that is I say this all in fun. Drew, obviously a fantastic operator, yeah. also. Uh, but like I remember people going up to the you know window like, hey, is is Gavin driving this trip or is Drew? You know, like. I, I can remember being in the tackle store and like watching the the, the switch of people like you know ho- hoping that Drew was driving Not, again. That's that's no knock against Drew, but like I, I you know yeah. when it goes from a relief to like hey man we really want this guy you know behind the wheel yeah like, that so was fun. All of a sudden it turned the other way yeah. is what you're basically saying. It's like oh yeah we want to go with Gavin. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no offense to Drew, but yeah. yeah, but you know and Drew's fine with that. I'm sure. Damn oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 right. Right. Drive the boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No question about it. So tell us about this new uh, deal you and Matt Brawl, or Captain Matt Brawl from San Diego are involved in yeah. captain's concepts yeah so th- we started this beginning of september you know this is something i've kind of been thinking about for a while um and i i just felt like we needed to get information down to our passengers better this it, it's kind of more designed for the you know passengers that's going to be fishing on a sport boat but it could, it could be really used for anybody that's in, interested in fishing if you're fishing in a skiff or if you're fishing long range or wherever really you know but it, it's really designed for the guy that's going to be fishing on matt's boat or any full day boat or is going to be fishing on day and a half um up to you know we do three up to three day trips but you know a lot of these a lot of these long range boats too are doing the same thing up to five day trips you know they're fishing around us as well so sure so what we do is we just we just uh, we we post videos once a week, roughly. You know, I post a video once a week. Matt posts a video once a week, and we just kind of talk about um, what we're fishing for, how we're and how we're doing it, and and how we're noticing. You know, who on the boat is catching the most fish, what they're doing, and you know, we we're we're going over everything, starting from you know what you should be doing in the off season to 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 practice your casting or practice this. Uh, we talk about the tackle that we like to use. You know, it may not nece- it's not necessarily the, the only tackle in the world to use, but, you know, this is the tackle I like to use, and this is why I like it. Uh, this is how I set up my tackle for the type of fishing. You know, this is why I'm using this much fluorocarbon and this kind of hook, or this is why I'm fishing this lure like this, um, all the way to, you know, hooking fish. Uh, we go over pulling on fish, how you should be fighting your fish, you know, in a sport boat setting, you know, because that's a... A big thing too is like you know if you're fishing on Matt's boat or you're fishing on my boat, you're fishing with thirty plus people. You know, so sure. when that's a another concept that I think you know gets overlooked a lot of times is fighting fish with a bunch of people around you that are right. fighting fish. And, and just, so much is catered to the private boat guy in that realm. Yeah, so you guys are specializes in, in the sports book guys. Yeah, so we we kind of got this idea from you know there's guys that do this type of thing for skiffs for guys in sure. small boats. Yeah, and stuff, yeah, you like know, but, Captain Dave and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's there's guys that do that for. 
that, but I think there's a void in. I agree. For, the, for the passengers, you know, for for that going on the sport boat, and I, I, you know, everybody wants to be a better fisherman. Absolutely, no doubt. Whether you're been doing this your whole life or or you're new to the game, you know, everybody wants to take any little edge they can. So it's such a win-win thing. You're you're helping a guy elevate himself for sure to be a better fisherman <clears throat> on your boat, and then that guy is on your boat having a better time catching more fish. I mean, it's like a it's a true win-win thing, you know. Yeah, you're, exactly. you're creating a better guy; he's becoming better for it. I, I love the idea. I thought it was yeah. great. And, and like you say, two of the top guys in the biz. And, and you nailed it too, Pete. Like, there's a lot of this stuff around for different segments, but there really isn't for for a guy that fishes on a sport boat. And right. I'm I'm one of those guys. I mean, there's so much of that, and there's so much little stuff to learn. And it is. It's two of the very, very top top guys in the fleet doing it. Yeah, no question. So, how do you access Captain's concept? It's Captain's concept. Yeah, it's, it's called Captain. It's a concept. It's just a page on um, Patreon. It, Patreon's a website where people, you know, you pay for a subscription to, to access our content. So if you you can find us on Patreon, it's called Captain's Concepts. You'll see um, my, my Matt's name on there as well. We have social media too. We have a uh, Instagram too for Captain's Concepts. It has a link in there that'll get you okay. straight to our website. So for, Instagram, Facebook too? Uh, we haven't started a Facebook Not, just yet. Just straight Instagram. Just Instagram. It's something we're gonna do. You know, this is. It's kind of difficult for us to really get things fully into motion because we're both on the boat, you know, sure. for all the time. But uh, once we slow down this winter and stuff, we'll be able to kind of get it out there a little bit better. But, yeah, you know, so far, the one thing I think that's important about this is that, um, you know, like I've, I'm learning things that I've seen Matt do. Like I've watched a video that Matt's done. I'm like, oh, well, I never thought about things like that. You know, so you're getting um, most things I would say regarding fishing me and Matt agree on. Um, but there are things that he does differently than I do. So you're kind of, you're getting kind of the best of both worlds. You know, you could get both of our perspectives and kind of take away what you want from them. And the thing I like about it too, is neither you guys are ego guys. It's definitely not, this is how I do it. And this is the best. Like it might be something that you do that makes a guy very successful, or it might just be like, Hey man, this passenger has been crushing them fishing this way. Like you're, you're the, the knowledge pool isn't just you two; it's everybody that's riding your boat. Like everything that adds the success that you guys observe goes onto the website. Very big point. Yeah, yeah. You know, we see. That's the other thing is, you know, we see. I mean, thousands of people fishing yeah. a year. You know, from from the very bottom to the very top. You know, we see all everybody come on the boat and everybody try different yeah. things. And that's you know that's that's helped both of us. I'm sure we've seen people passengers do things and certain lures and fish a certain way where in our heads we're like oh that's never going to work you know and then all of a sudden we're, we're using it the next day <laughs> and next thing you know everybody's buying it's a like, three whoa. foot long knife jig with yeah, dangling yeah, all yeah, over exactly. it. Like, you, you yeah. show somebody i mean think about that think about that exact thing like you show somebody what is you know arguably one of the hottest things right now for catching big ones is big long 400 gram knife jigs with the hooks hanging off all over you show somebody that two years ago it's like dude come on what are you yeah, what are you really? doing right yeah. get, get out of here like no go buy you know go buy a hook and a sardine but you flash forward two years, like that's it. Yeah, you know? it's the hot stuff right cool. now. Yeah, funny. So, uh, can we access if we Google Captain's Concept? Would it come up? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think I think the best way is if you if you have Instagram is to look at our Instagram Captain's Concepts and then um, link over from there. There's a link, or you could go on to Patreon. You could there's actually Patreon is a is a website. Yeah, Patreon is a website. Okay. You can get an app on your phone too, so you could okay. use it. It's relatively similar to an Instagram, but um, yeah, it's a paid subscription. And uh, you could find us on there as well. Okay. Yeah. But probably the easiest way to find us would, would be to go on the links straight from our links. Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And like you say, you just started this in September, so you're just getting it rolling. Yeah, I'm sure should... as you develop it, you're going to expand and, and, and get more and more because I know that a lot of people want to get this information, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, we just kind of, like you said, you know, for us, I'm on the boat all the, you know, usually yeah. a month or a month and a half at a time. Matt's on the boat five, six days a week. It's very, very rare that we're both on land. At the same time, right now, you know, so um, we we just we got it going late here in the fall. Maybe work, you know, work through the kinks out if there is any, and then once the once we both slow down, we have some time, then we'll really be able to hopefully get it out and get it, you know, easier accessible to people. I think the the but your video content is staying steady. It's just the the yeah. tweak, the tweaks to it is what's going to get to happen. Yeah, yeah, no, we're 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 posting videos all the time. Like I said, we're we're trying to do roughly one video each a week is is kind of what we're going for you know sometimes it may be more sometimes maybe a little bit less depending on you know because my trips are sometimes you know back to back to back three-day trips where i have no time and um you know sometimes i'll be in more where i can do more videos and stuff like that so um the content's out all the time you know i think we we have uh videos up 
few pictures. And, you know, this is something also where you could comment on our videos, ask us questions. We're super open to that. You okay. can message us that, personally, yeah. ask us questions. Hey, that's I'm, part of the subscription. That's part of it, yeah. Oh, wow. You know, like I said, remember that we're, you know, sometimes I'm on the water for three days where I won't be able to um, answer your question if I don't have service. But, you know, the second I get service, I can or I can talk to Matt. Yeah. And Matt can answer questions, vice versa, for him as well. But, uh, yeah, you can ask us any questions you want. We we're we want people to ask us. We want people to tell us, like, hey, yeah, we're, looking make at, it better. we're looking for this information. Like, can you make a video on this? And, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do whatever. Okay. So, yeah. Great. That's going to be great. Concept. Yeah. yeah, really good information <clears throat> and a great service for uh, sport boat anglers, too, up and down the coast. Right, Ricky? Yeah, totally. I think it's going to be a great one. Great info. And, like you say, I mean, to, to – it's not easy to fish with these guys. You know, I mean, like the, the they have both grown those operations. You know, the San Diego, the Pacific Queen. I mean, it's it's a, it's you know, the boat is booked out a long ways, and you know, I mean, fishing. You know, they're they're not inexpensive trips. So for a, a short amount of money to be able to better prepare yourself for the trip that you've been waiting for your reservation to get here, it's a no brainer. Yeah. I, I just think it's awesome. I think it's such a good call. I mean, if you you know you paid several hundred bucks to get to go fishing on your big bluefin trip. Why would you not put every single tool in your toolbox to, to get ready to go? And, and that's just what it is. Yeah, for sure. And as you can hear, we have a great show lined up. A lot to talk about here. Big they're, time. They're still biting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're really stoked to have Gavin in here answering your questions, talking Pacific Clean, talking Captain Concept. Going to be a great show. If you want to join us this morning, give us a call at 213-432-1090. Again, 213-432-1090. That's how you reach us here on Let's Talk Hookup this morning. Or you can text the show, the text the show option, only available via the Let's Talk Hookup app. If you got a great text, bring it on. We'd love to hear it. Just uh, download the Let's Talk Hookup app. It's a free download on either your iPhone or your Android device, and it's the only way to text in your questions uh, to Gavin and here to Let's Talk Hookup, and we'll be reading them throughout the show. Not only are we taking phone calls, taking your questions, having a great time today, we are giving away a killer prize. Somebody's going to get to go fishing with Gavin's partner. We're doing a full day trip on board the San Diego. Captain with fishing Matt Brawla, fishing with Captain Ryan Boston. A full day trip going to one lucky caller at the end of the show today. Again, if you want to get your shot at winning that great trip, or better yet, your chance to talk to Gavin, 213-432-1090. And we come back. We're going to be taking your phone calls. Lots of great info coming your way. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on that Let's Talk Hook Up app or the mightier 1090. This is Captain Art Taylor of Searcher Sport Fishing. Celia and I would like to thank all of our great customers for helping celebrate Searcher's 50th anniversary. Our 2021 schedule is available now with more limited load trips. The Searcher has a great crew, fantastic food, a family atmosphere to make your fishing adventure complete. Book your trip online at searchersportfishing.com. That's searchersportfishing.com. Or call Celia at 619-226-2403. Dana Lanning in Mission Bay is truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Come see our expert fishing staff for just about anything you need for a great day of on-the-water fun. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Lanning has you covered with the blackjack. Perfect for up to four anglers or the impulse with up to six. Dana Lanning has a huge selection with everything you need to catch small bay bass or giant tuna. We will be sure to set you up with the right gear. We even offer real repair and Mexican and California fishing licenses. Don't forget the amazing deli at Dana Lanning with all the food, ice, and some beverages you need to complete your day. Need freshwater tackle? Head to East County Baiting Tackle with all the finest rods and reels, the hottest freshwater lures, and live bait. ECBT has an amazing staff who love to share their passion for fishing. East County Bait and Tackle is located at the end of the 67 Freeway on Main Street in Lakeside. And Dana Landing is next to the Dana Launch Ramp on San Diego's Mission Bay. Check out DanaLanding.com for more details. Saturday, November 6th, is Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Come see seminars by saltwater experts, great deals on tackle, and reps from Shimano and other top tackle companies. Shimano Terramar rods with TC4 blank construction make this the ideal rod to chase giant. Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 6th. Your vacation bucket list can't be completed without visiting the Katmai Lodge, Alaska this summer. A world-class wilderness fishing paradise on the banks of the famed Alagnac River. Get in the action fishing for all five species of Pacific salmon. King, sockeye, chum, coho, plus trophy-sized rainbow trout. 
Arctic Grayling and Dolly Varden, both in the Alagnac and nearby waters. Cap My Lodge's Coast Guard and CPR certified guides are fly fishing fanatics and know how to help you reel them in, ensuring your days are fish filled while you enjoy freshly prepared snacks and barbecued lunches on the river. Back at the lodge, enjoy fireside appetizers and refreshments each afternoon. Delicious dinner prepared by the lodge's exceptional chef. Take a quick fly out trip to Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park for world renowned bear watching. And check out our trout fishing specials at katmai.com. That's K A T M A I.com. Katmai.com. Hey, this is Rosie from Cedro Sport Fishing. Cedro's Island is considered the Yellowtail and Calico bass fishing capital in the world, and nobody does it better than Cedro Sport Fishing. We are committed to providing first-class service to our guests and an unforgettable fishing experience. We have made a good thing even better. We are the only lodge to offer all of our guests a direct flight departing to the CBX in San Diego. Leave home in the morning and fish in the afternoon. We have a beautiful waterfront lodge and first-class meals and service. What are you waiting for? Call me at 619-772-7570 or check out cedrosportfishing.com. Book soon. Trips are going fast. Hey, anglers. AFCO Pro Captain Ben Florentino of Coastal Charters here. As a full-time guide, I'm on the water all year long. It's my livelihood. Having the right clothing is of the utmost importance to staying warm, dry, cool, and comfortable to endure whatever the Pacific wants to throw at me. Thankfully, I'm equipped with AFCO clothing to keep me dialed season after season. Do yourself a favor and check out AFCO's award-winning gear at a dealer near you or learn more at AFCO.com. Welcome! Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook. I'm having a great time here this morning. Talking <clears throat> fishing going to be a great show with Gavin in here. Phones are already getting packed up. Again, if you want to get through, it's going to be a very busy morning. 213-432-1090. That's the number to reach. Let's Talk Hook Up. Get in on the fun and, have yeah, hang out with us. Uh, oh, yeah. No kidding. And uh, so, Ricky, come on. Give us some more info <clears throat> on that uh, Shogun trip. To, so when you left, I mean, I was at Palmas de Cortez last <laughs> Sunday, and... Uh, uh, when you left, I know you had a little bit of oh, you a little, a little intimidation with the I gale was, gale warnings up all over the place. I right? was preparing for my eating that I was about to take for sure. Yeah, I, well, I, uh, everybody's tied to the dock, right? Yeah, I mean, Gavin, you work out there, right? Yeah, no, every, all the short guys, short range guys, tie their boats up. Yeah. We, we, had, we canceled a three day trip, leaving Monday morning. It was like, which is no small that, feat. Right? I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, for Heavy this loss. time of year, is pretty rare, really. Oh, that, that, yeah. It's kind of like a... October's best, yeah. Yeah, normally we'd expect that kind of storm, like, you know, That's November. That's a December storm, November, yeah. December, yeah, November, yeah. December. I was sure we were just about to go get just beat down. And you know what? I, I said it, I you know, wrote a little thing on our Let's Talk of Instagram yesterday. Captain Renee, Captain Renee made some very captain moves on that trip to keep us comfortable and keep us on the fish. You know, our, our trip down to Ensenada... The day we left was the day that it was really building, you know, not not fully developed yet, but but on its way to getting not so nice. And uh, when we left Ensenada, he drove 55 miles out of his way, like north. Yeah, north, you know, north northwest uh, to get a better line coming down to the island. So you had so, it like, more behind you, exactly. <clears throat> so like we, you know, rather than doing a straight diagonal across to the island, we went 55 miles out of our way. Um, so that we could, turn, you know, he basically drove until the weather really, really happened so that we were going down swell all the way to the island again. And it was just, I can't tell you how comfortable it was. I mean, the Shogun is a very good boat to be on when the weather's up. It's sure. steel, it's wide, it's heavy, it takes weather really, really <clears> good. And, man, I, I will tell you, any any of my buds know me, I, I was groveling, like, oh, here we go. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get my ass kicked. This is going to be it. And, uh, man, yeah. it, it, it really... The, well, the weather was up. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. not going to pretend like we didn't have to deal with weather. We did. But every move he made was killer. I mean, we yeah. were plenty comfortable the whole time. And Our, that's a big island, too. There's lots of places to tuck. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we dealt with weather the whole trip. The, yeah. the weather definitely affected our trip. Um, but he made every move possible to keep it as comfortable as could. We fished in areas that were very tight to the island that still produced great fishing. Um, that were as out of the weather as it could be. And there was never a point in time on the trip. Honestly, what it was more was all of us just like, man, look at that wind. But, like, we were tucked away from the swell. Like, we didn't – I mean, there were times where we were fishing where a couple hundred yards outside of us, it was horrific. But where we were tucked in, we were fine. Good. I mean, yeah. like, you could damn near cast – to weather that was three times worse than what you were sitting in and just watch wow. it. You know, you're you're dealing with, 
you know, 20 knots of wind and, and the wind chop that's associated with it, but you're looking out at like a, almost white ocean where the, you know, where it's not just white capping, but the wind is like spraying the foam off of everyone. Like it was, it was real, dude. Yeah. That <laughs> it was sounds, some real yeah. weather. I guess at, at, at uh, Tanner, it was like 20 feet at 50 knots or something at one point. Yeah. The one time I checked or the worst that I saw it, it was like. 40 knots with 20 foot swells at Tanner. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be there. No, yeah. nobody no. wants to be there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's like like on a Navy ship they'd be getting yeah. Yeah. on that's that That's real deal with yeah, that's So with as crazy as all that sounds, though, like, gee, we fished every day. Like, uh, you know, wow. our, our original plan driving down was to, to hug the beach and fish somewhere along the coast and then, you know, do that for a day or two. And then when it got a little better, try to sneak to the island and... And, and Renee's fear, and I think dead on, was if we do that, we're probably not going to get there. Like, because yeah. then the crossing over is going to be more than we want to deal with. So we just jammed straight to the island, and man, it was so the right call. Yeah. We had great fishing. I mean, we really yeah. did. We had we had. Ron good fishing was telling every me about day. huge yellows too, huh? That place is so cool. That is just yeah. the coolest island. That is just it's not that far from home. It's a couple hundred miles, and just. You know, consistent tuna over a hundred pounds. The grade of yellowtail, it, it's it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, we had an average fish of probably right at thirty pounds, meaning a few that were under that, and plenty that were over that, and so many of that classic Guadalupe. Oh, I'm on! Boom, gone. Yeah. Like, all right, well, I'm yeah. off again. You know, like <laughs> there was so many dropper loop fish that you hook in bad neighborhoods that are that are big ones. I mean, our our biggest yellowtail of the trip. You know, was was in the fifties. Uh, we had plenty in the forties. Lots in the thirty pound range. It was crazy. Wow. It, it place is so cool. It is such a rad place to fish. And you cast a sardine, and you have no idea if it's going to get eaten by a forty pound yellow, a hundred and forty pound yellowfin, a twenty pound yellowfin, a fifteen pound yellow, a calico bat. It's just, it's such a cool place yeah. to fish. I, I I I love it. It's awesome. So, uh, g- given that like captain's concepts, what, what was the inside tip to get bit? Because I heard that you were getting bit. I, I yeah. I um, you know what I I was fishing uh, sixty pound gold label cigar fluorocarbon nice. the whole time. Um, you could get, you know, if you were fishing 50 pound, maybe you get a bite a little better, but not, but I don't think so. You know, I don't think it, it's like anything. And Gavin will be a better guy to describe this, but having g- burning through baits until you had a very good bait, that was what it took to get a bite, you know, and, and a very, how are you hooking your baits? Um, a, a mix of shoulder hooking and butt hooking. I, I don't think it made a world of difference how we were fishing and, a, a lot of times I, uh, I I make that decision on how that bait swims into my hand when I pull it out of the scoop. If it's facing forward, I you know it's easier to butt hook them, and if it's facing backwards, it's easier to shoulder hook them. And I didn't think for what we were given there was a huge issue because if you had a bait that swam down, you had a great opportunity at hooking one of those big yellows. If you had a bait that swam great on the surface, you had an opportunity catching a, a tuna, and it wasn't. It wasn't ever full speed, you know, so I would say a 70-30 mix of both, 70%, I was probably butt hooking 30% shoulder. Uh, I was fishing 60 pounds, Seaguar Floro, a pretty short, you know, like a two-arm pull, you know, so 12 feet, probably 15 feet, something like that, and a, a Talica 16. And, nice. uh, and that, was, that, was, that was like my rig that was really working the best for me in, in terms of that was enough rod to really pull on a good one. 50-pound, um, maybe you get bit a little better, but... You know, I mean, there was there was plenty of the problem was our fish was mostly fifty to eighty pounds, and then also it was ninety to one hundred and twenty pounds. And yeah. if you hook a hundred pounder on fifty pound, you you got your work cut out for you. Guadalupe yellowfin on fifty is not an easy task. So. Yeah, and you, and you have the tack. Tax man to, to go deal with too if you're pulling on for too long. We had the perfect amount of shark issue on our trip. I mean, we didn't see we didn't see a white shark until the very last day of our trip, and wow. I think it they took, were hiding from the weather too. It, yeah, it took <laughs> it took one. Well, I mean, it's just getting towards the latter part of the season. Sure. You know, that's one of the that's one of the advantages of going late is that uh, is that the sharks are, are less frequent. And uh, the very last day we saw the shark, he had one. It was perfect, if you want to know the truth. We, he, he took one 100-pounder, I mean, boat side. We got the full jaw show of that thing swimming around the boat, and he ate it at color, and everybody's screaming. It chomped maybe two others, you know, far away from the boat, and that was it. You know, we, yeah. we, we had like the, we, had, really we, got, we got the show. We all got to see it in the hoots and hollers of seeing a, you know, six, 16 moment. foot animal like eating, 
you know, eating tuna right right below yeah. your feet. No one you don't want to go swimming in that water. And then he swam <laughs> off, and that was it. So yeah, yeah it was a, it was a it, was a it really was a great trip. Great. All thinking, considering, thinking uh, this might not be the one. It, yeah. it was it was the one, yeah, and some and some great fishing to be had. Right. Right. Well, hopefully you'll post some pictures, maybe do a story, and uh, yeah, we'll post pic- it on the website. There's pictures up on our our Let's Talk Hookup Instagram oh, there, account okay. right now. You can right. see some photos of Ron Lane holding a big yellow and okay. some of the guys and great. and synapses. And yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to put a little story together All for right. sure. Fantastic. Well, hey, let's find out what's biting down south. Let's talk to John Ireland uh, live from Rancho Leonero in Baja East Cape. Buenos dias, John. Buenos dias, Pete. Rick. Hello, Gavin. Well, hey, it's, morning. it's been up, quite John? a week. Good morning, John. Good morning, guys. You know, it's been quite a, it's about three weeks now. We've had rain and more rain. I'd say we've had at least 10 inches total of uh, rain over the last three weeks and a little bit of wind mixed in this this last week. So it's hurt the fishing. <clears throat> it's been the last couple of days finally uh, – the wind stopped, the rain stopped, the uh, water's finally cleaning up, and, and the fishing's improved um, markedly, uh, much better much better than it was. And, gosh, it couldn't be, as as you'll testify, Pete, you were just down there last week. It's all jungle, man. It's green, green down here. It's really beautiful, really beautiful. Um, the fishing, really all, all about the fishing right now is uh, uh, thank gosh for, for the striped marlin. <clears throat> they hang around no matter what. Uh, I was over at the Lynn Rose tournament at the awards ceremony last night honoring our, our good friend Jack Nielsen, who passed away last year, as we know. And uh, there were 21 boats fishing the tournament, uh, three days. Two of the days, the wind was blowing really good. Yesterday, it wasn't, and uh, things picked up for them. Uh, give you some kind of idea of the marlin bite. Uh, three teams were tied for first place with five marlin released apiece. And uh, and that's really been the story of this dry marlin. They they have hung around. The water's still a little dirty, and cleaning up quick. But uh, but the marlin have been the game. The bottom fishing's been relatively good for as dirty as it is. And and yet, as soon as it calmed down and everything, the guys got back on the fish. A lot of pompano, grouper, and pargo on the bottom. We had uh, a couple of uh, nice yellowfin come in off a of rincon there. The guys, they're real line shy. These guys picked them up, a uh, 45-pounder and a 47-pounder on 20-pound test. and took them almost an hour and a half to pull each one of them in. They had a, they had a rough time with it. But I expect, uh, you know, once this uh, the water clears up and all that, I expect the fishing to get back into, into good form. But it's been, it's been a rough three weeks, that's for sure, with all the rain yeah, and weather. It's been a little it's slow been like, for I, sure, yeah. I'll guarantee at least ten inches of rain. It's just it's uh, it's been the rainiest uh, October I can recall ever. So, but it's a, uh, it's a green it's I've ever seen in the East Cape. 11, it's it's, yeah. it's so we sent out green down there. It's like, like you say, it's a jungle. It, it is a jungle out there. It's so green. It's incredible, and all the cows and and horses are just as fat as they can be. It's nice to see that, you know. <laughs> but we are getting That's we are having sure. definitely having a rainy uh, season and. Uh, and uh, but I expect uh, the fishing to pick up markedly here in the next few days as the water clears up. You know the washes yeah, open up a little bit, and dump some mud out there, and, and uh, dirty it up a little bit. But it's cleaning up quick, so we're expecting a better week this week coming up. Fantastic, John. Well, if somebody wants to book a trip to Rancho Leonero, so easy to get to, and such a world away from being right in our backyard. How do we get there? Thanks, Pete. It's eight hundred six four six two two five two or rancholeonero dot com. Thanks, John. Appreciate the report, and we'll look for better fishing uh, next week when we talk to you on Sunday. Thanks for the call. It's guaranteed, Pete. It's guaranteed. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Best time All right. Thanks a lot for the call. All right. Let's jump into the phones, Rick. They, they're they packed. They it. want to talk to Gavin. Yeah. Let's do it. Every single phone line full at 213-432-1090. Let's talk to John. Call us from Escondido this morning. What's up, John? Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. It uh, sounds like you had an awesome trip, uh, Ricky at, uh, and uh, Gavin. I give you nothing but kudos, dude. It, uh, you're the skipper of the boat. And you would think you're the deckhand. It, uh, you're 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 hands on, and you know, I could I could spend a day talking about stories, fishing with you on your boat, and uh, but just uh, um, you know, you got me my biggest a couple years ago, two twenty five, and that thing came to the boat three times, and uh, you reached out and stuck that thing in the head with a gaff. And that uh, ripped it out of your hands. And uh, I talked to the guys in the boat, and they're like, you always saw was this former going down the side of the boat. 
and uh, uh, Billy's like, hey, dude, somebody's on John's line. And uh, dude, dude with a flat ball pulled the gaff out of the fish's head and brought it back to the boat, you know, and then uh, it finally came back to the boat the fourth time, and you guys put three gaffs in and brought it over the side. But, uh, you know, um, kudos to you, and uh, I would tell anybody that, you know, if you see an opening on your boat, uh, uh, book it up because there's not very many green spots. Everything's red. And, uh, you know, uh, so uh, good luck to you, and I can't wait, I can't wait to fish with you again. All right. And uh, have you uh, signed on to Captain's Concepts yet? I guess we lost. Them. Well, I heard from it, right? Yeah. So, is uh, yeah. I volunteer with uh, uh, the, the Randy Jones Foundation, and uh, Matt's mom told me about it. Right, That's cool. cool. Great. All right. Check it out. Uh, it's, again, on, on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. I just download. Being an old guy, I'm not really familiar with uh, Patreon, I but it. it's, a, it's an app. And uh, um, website or just, an app? It's a website too. Okay, mm-hmm. and and you just either dial into the website or download the app. Yeah, and yeah. Then, it, and then you search Captain's Concepts on Patreon. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's similar to the setup of like an Instagram. You know, just a different um, a different company, a different okay. app. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all fee based. Yeah. 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 I, again, I think that even stuff like John's talking about, like flat fall and like. It's so it's so easy at its lowest level. You tie your lure on, you put it in free spool, you wait for a bite to happen. But there's so much more stuff that goes into it. You know the the rigging, the way you guys like to do it, how you like to fish it, how deep you like to fish it. No, know, knowing how deep you are, and like you know, getting to just getting you know from the mouth of a brawler, getting it from the mouth of a Gavin. You know, this is this is how this is how guys are able to be as successful as John was catching a two twenty five on it. Like that's yeah. the that's the thing for for you know for short change getting to getting to advance yourself to that. I, I think I think you guys are going to do fantastic. With and this. things change. I mean, it 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 was different in May and June than it is. Today in October, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, in the springtime, we had a lot of uh, a lot of nighttime fishing in the spring, and during the day, it was almost all you know fish on sinker rigs and stuff. You know, and, and that's progressed now into you know we're not using sink- up until this last trip that they're getting on right now. You know, they had some sinker rig fish, but before that, is all fly line fish. You know, there's, there's so many things in fishing that stay the same, but there's even more things that change all the time. Yeah. You know, so. So this is current information. Yeah, you this, do a video a week, each of you, and yeah. you say, this is what's going on right now. Yeah, we do. Like right now, while we're fishing, we, that's exactly what we're doing. You know, I'm doing a video one, roughly once a week. Matt's doing one roughly once a week. Hey, this is what's going on. This is what's working. Uh, if you're coming out, this is how I would you know, prepare yourself to be set up. And, um, you know, as it goes through the winter, we'll go over, like, fundamental stuff when we're not fishing or, or whatever. We'll go over other things and what we do in the wintertime and how you can practice for the summer and get yourself prepared and your gear prepared for next year. We've yeah. been getting a lot of questions lately, especially with all this big fish, about drags, drag pressures, drag settings. So it'd be fun this wintertime for, you know, to, to see from you guys uh, how, how you do it, how heavy a drag pressure really is. You know, I, I hear it in the tackle store all the time. Pe- people... Are, are th- there's a disconnect from how much drag pressure something is and then how much is used and then how much is needed for a big fish. And, and I mean that in, like, guys will sometimes steer away from a reel because it gets, whatever, it makes 30 pounds of drag pressure. And on a small reel, you're never going to use 30 pounds of drag pressure. And then when they get out fishing, they might set their drag where they think it is, and it, it's, you know... It's it's at five pounds, and you give it to Gavin. Like, do we need to put more more drag on? It it'd just be there's such a disconnect between what a reel makes, what somebody thinks they should have, what somebody's actually using, and then what a crew member would to use. Like, the, all of those seem to be a on a different level. It'd be great to have a you know a resource of, of yours where say like this is it. You know. Yeah, you know, like something as simple as setting a drag. You could probably look online and they say oh 30 pound line you need to have this many pounds of drag. But there's so much that goes into it. Other than that, you know. Um, what size hook you're using, how big your hook is, if you're fishing a lot of spectra that doesn't stretch, if you're fishing mono that stretches, um, what we're fishing for, really, you know, um, how heavy your rod is. If you have a super stiff rod, I'm not going to set your drag as tight as if you have uh, a rod that maybe is not as stiff. So there's 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 so much more that goes into that. And this is all things that we could go over on our website, you know, and there's, there's a bunch of things. To, like I said, one of the things that we'd really like for people to do is ask us questions like, hey, um, message us, say, hey, we want to see how you guys do this. 
So that'd be something that's helpful too. If you if you sign up with us, you know you can you can ask you can us questions. And we can, yeah, exactly. And we can we can set you guys up and get you as prepared as we can for your next trip. Great stuff. That's awesome. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more. Let's talk cooking coming your way, including a big block of your phone calls. We got catch reports coming up. All kinds of great info. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the Mighty Year 1090. Hey guys, this is Ali Husseini from Local Knowledge and BD Outdoors. I'm a lucky guy in so many ways, and one thing I'm really grateful for is my little brother, Yosef. Yosef is not only a fellow angler, but he's also an amazing realtor that specializes in helping us in the angling community find the ultimate home. If you own a home, get a free no-obligation evaluation online now by typing in SoCalHomeEval.com. That's SoCalHomeEval.com. All you do is put in your address, and you'll get a home value report immediately sent to your email. No pressure, no obligation obligations, just answers. Yosef is the SoCal real estate go-to guy. He's helped me and so many of my fellow fishing buddies find what they're looking for in a home. He knows anglers and he understands the real estate market. Not only that, but he's also a really nice guy. How many brothers can you say that about? Go to SoCalHomeEval.com and find out where you stand in the real estate market and then get with Yosef and find your ultimate home. Again, go to SoCalHomeEval.com and we'll see you on the water. Saturday, November 6th, it's Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. And it's our largest sale ever. Plenty of seminars by saltwater experts, over 20 reps from tackle manufacturers like Shimano. Come check out the Shimano Talica, the pinnacle of lever drag two-speed reels. The Talica features Shimano's Hagani body to prevent misalignment of moving parts under the heaviest loads. When throwing jigs, the Shimano Trinidad is your top choice. For the best ever tackle bargains, check out Tackle Day at Fisherman's Landing, Saturday, November 6th. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing offers half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day trips on the Liberty. Many trips can be easily booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hard-working crew will make sure your fishing experience is one to remember. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service operation offering great half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day open party trips on the spacious and comfortable Liberty. Since we introduced the full-day trip at Fisherman's Landing, the 85-foot Liberty has become a favorite among full-day operations with bunks for your comfort, huge bait capacity, and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big modern galley and two interior heads with showers. All our open party trips from half-day, full, or one- to three-day trips can easily be booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Lobster season is here. It's time to gear up with the best in the business. Promar, based in SoCal. Promar knows lobster and makes everything you need to catch these tasty critters. The Promar guys are hardcore lobster fishermen and have designed the most successful hoop nets and accessories on the market, including the Ambush XL Heavy 14-pound, 36-inch rigid hoop net, the largest allowed by law. Visit Promar on Facebook or on the web at promarahi.com. Got to love California in the summer. Just remember, COVID is still with us. So if you're going to the water, plan ahead. Follow local public health guidelines and make sure everyone wears a life jacket. Save the ones you love. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning, talking fishing, lots of fun going on. And as promised, we're going to find out what's biting out there. It is time for the catch report. Today is sponsored by Summit Gasoline Discount Everingham Brothers Gate Bait Certificates. They have ice, fishing licenses, beer, soda, water, snacks, coffee, and most importantly, the best prices on gas and diesel at Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. Easy to pull in and out with your boat trailer. A huge area for your boats and trucks and trailers to get through. And for a limited time, Get a hundred pounds of free ice with a minimum of a thirty-five gallon purchase. That's so cool. Yeah. Those guys do a really good job for the fishermen. Uh, you heard it right. There's no better place to get gas and load up for everything you need to go fishing on Summit Gasoline and Sports Arena. If you have a skiff on a trailer 
Why wouldn't you? I mean, the, the fuel is cheaper than just about anywhere yeah. else and, in and town. Fuel just went up like twenty cents yeah. a gallon this week, and, and it's considerably so, and, cheaper. And it's way ch- and so they keep the prices low for the fishermen. They sell you uh, Everingham Brothers bait certificates. It's basically you get a full scoop for close to the price of a half scoop. So you're you get a better price on your fuel. You basically go in there, you buy a certificate, you take it out to the receiver, mm-hmm. you're getting a discount on your bait. You get a hundred pounds worth of ice for free. Like it's it's a just, yeah, that's a great go-to. spot. Yeah. yeah. Right next to the sports arena in San Diego. Yeah. Easy easy in, easy out, Summit Gasoline. Hey, we're going to continue with our catch report. Find out is what is biting out there. Head on up to Dana War Sport Fishing. Captain Brian Woolley's on the line right now. What's up, Woolley? Hey, guys. Good stuff this morning, man. Good morning. What's up, Woolley? We're having fun. Good deal, man. Gosh, we rolled through another good week up here. It's, you can't beat this weather, huh? This is phenomenal weather. Certainly nice last few days, no doubt. It kind of translated some, some good fishing, some good opportunity for us. Right now, our half-day stuff. You know, we're still having to make that run below that closure there at San Onofre. It's kind of a bummer. So with all that nice little stretch of coastline below our harbor and up to the uh, MPA above us, all still closed. So we're keeping tabs on that stuff. But uh, the guys making the run down there, fishing on the inside, have seen some good uh, sheephead sculpin, a few bass on the sinker rig type stuff there in fishing the shallows and some of the artificial reefs down in that sector. And then some of the guys have been out in the deeper water on the half days fishing uh, bottom fish, and that's been pretty good. That uh, rockfish area is just, it's just above where the three-quarter day boat's been fishing, but, uh, you know, both trips, the half day and the three-quarter day out in that deeper water, pretty pretty similar results. The three-quarter day guys down there, uh, still the current made it pretty easy to set up uh, on some drifts this week. We had a little bit of uphill current one or two days this week, mixed with a little bit of downhill current one day this week, so we're able to, you know, kind of start at the upper edge and drift a day or two, and then the lower edge and kind of get pushed up a day or two, so it was kind of nice to, you know, change the attack on that stuff. Some nice reds and grouper on those drifts, and then the days where uh, that current was a little soft, we were able to uh, get on the anchor and uh, fish really well, too. Uh, that stuff was biting good on the anchor with some mix, nice mixed uh, rockfish, some nice, real nice-looking whitefish for on the coast here, and some uh, sculpin and uh, other stuff there off the bottom. Over at Clemente, the Fury's been over there a few days this week. Uh, he's had some nice mixed bag fishing as well for his work over there. A lot of Anita, they're seeing a lot of that stuff pushed in over there. So they've been uh, catching some of that pretty good. That's been mixed fish. A couple pounds, up to five pounds. And then a few yellowtail on his counts this week. You know, those giant schools that he had been seeing, they've been looking for that stuff in the mornings. You know, first light kind of a deal, trying to get on some of that. They just haven't really seen what they need to see to, to make a catch on it. So they've had a, a couple yellowtail on their counts, but no big scores on that. So I'm sure that'll change with this weather and all that stuff. They'll start seeing some, some of that stuff that wants to cooperate. And then he's been getting on the anchor and catching that bonita, like I was telling you, some nice bass fish and sheep hit and white fish. So, again, I imagine they'll be back on that yellowtail here soon enough. So that's kind of our week, you know, just having to make that run down below that zone to, to get the ball rolling there on our half days. It's kind of a bummer. But, you know, at least we're getting out. We have plenty of room on our trips this week, guys, if you want to hop on one. Call the landing, make those reservations. Our number up here, 949-496-5794. Or you can link us there through the Let's Talk Cookup website or check us out here at DanaWorth.com. Awesome, buddy. Well, certainly sounds like some good fishing, like you say, having to deal with the closure. But a good week of weather in front of us here should uh, should keep up. And uh, we'll look forward to another great report next week. Right on, man. Thanks for the time, guys. We'll talk to you then. See ya. Thanks, right, Willie. Thanks, Willie. Appreciate that very much. Now let's hit the surf. Our surf guru, Gundy Gunderson, is on the line with our surf fishing report. Good morning, Gundy. What's going on, gentlemen? We're having a great time, buddy. Anxious to hear what's going on in the surf. Yeah, you know, we're in the, uh, we're kind of feeling the fall transition here. Overnight lows are cooling off, but I tell you what, there's just lots of opportunities. Uh, you know, it's not typical summer fishing. It's not winter type fishing, but there's always, you know, interesting catches to be made. And, uh, you know, this, uh, report reflects that. You know, fall taking a grip, like I said, cooler water temps, but the change has been gradual, and so that really doesn't affect fishing too much. There's still some good catches. You know, we're seeing uh, more white sea bass, improved halibut fishing, and that was something this month that uh, or this last week we saw a lot more halibut catches. And then more perches, sheephead, opali, that kind of thing. Hook, line, sinker reported a good halibut bite up there along Goleta Beach, a uh, mix of short and legal fish. I think 28 inches was top fish. The cherry berry pattern flash minnows been one of the better lures up there. Uh, a legal white sea bass was taken. Uh, <clears throat> let's see on a cherry uh, cherry berry pa- pattern. Like I said, 
Uh, a legal white sea bass was also taken at graveyards on a swim bait. Wiley's reported a 29-inch white sea bass taken on squid off Coral Beach, and they had a, f- a few reports of shorts and just legal fish. Also, uh, the reef beach has been kicking out big numbers of opali. You know, that's a sign of cooler water. Mussels, the top bait for those opal bo- opali button bass. You know, some are small, but you can get them up to five, six pounds. So uh, that'll, that'll yank your line there. Uh, the reef and kelp stringers also holding some sand bass up there. Big fish reported good halibut catches along Shoreline Drive. Uh, that's a, a typically good spot for halibut to start showing. And they said there's lots of bait inside the harbor. Uh, legal fish to 28 inches. The top catch, however, this week was a 30-inch halibut. Now it was taken on a flash minnow at the inlet at Bolsa Chica. And from basically from there south, you know, everything's closed. I, I think all the way down to Box Canyon. So catch them, tackle, Hogan's. We didn't have any reports from those guys, unfortunately. Uh, Pacific Coast reported some good Corbina catches along North County beaches. You know, not a lot of anglers out, but, you know, mid-60 degree water. And like you said, warm temperature coming up this week. Uh, and these are nice late late season fish, you know, a, a good number of fish in the three to four pound class. And boy, the ghost shrimp has been a way to hook one. You know, they can be wily this time of year and uh, the sand crabs are disappearing. So consider bringing ghost shrimp down there. Make sure you know how to hook them and stuff. But boy, you can get a dandy right now. And then the top catch there was a 75 pound black sea bass caught and released from the Mission Ooh. Beach jetty. I understand he had a, he was riddled with uh, little hooks along his lip, probably from uh, you know anglers who hooked something and never knew what it was. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty good, Gundy. That's a cool story. Good one. Yeah, the guy the said beach. he just popped popped the little hooks out of there and sent him on his way. So that was nice. a neat story. Nice. That's right. Right on. Well, great report, man. That was a good one. Sounds like some good fishing to be had. Appreciate it as always, bro. We'll talk to you next week. All right, gentlemen, good show. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, Gundy. All right, appreciate that. Again, that's going to wrap up our catch report today. Check surffishtackle.com for all your surf fishing reports, tackle, and more. All right. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way, more your phone calls, more great info. You stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Hookup, Southern California sport fishing voice on the mightier 1090. If you're looking for a high-quality cocktail that's also easy to enjoy on your next fishing trip, check out Cutwater Spirits' lineup of canned cocktails. Cutwater's master distiller and co-founder, Yusuf Cherney, is a hardcore fisherman. In fact, he developed Cutwater with all his favorite adventures in mind. Yusuf takes Cutwater's award-winning spirits, uses them to make real cocktails, and then puts them into cans so you can take them anywhere. It's like they were made for fishing because they were actually made for fishing. Check out their popular canned margarita made with real tequila, the zesty vodka mule or the spicy bloody mary which has some serious bite they also make super refreshing vodka sodas and grapefruit lime and cucumber flavors just crack the can and enjoy a bar quality cocktail even when there's no bar in sight back at the dock or at your evening anchorage in catalina cutwater cocktails are exactly what you need for your next fishing trip you can check out all 18 of cutwater's canned cocktails at cutwaterspirits.com and then look for them at your local liquor store then go ahead and set your cocktail free please enjoy responsibly San Diego, do you need a vehicle that's built ready for your next adventure? Well, your San Diego County Ford dealers have you covered with the 2021 Ford Ranger. This adventure-ready truck is built with durable features like its frame-mounted step bumpers and high-strength steel frame. But that's not all. The Ford Ranger also has an available terrain management system with four selectable drive modes depending on what terrain you're on for optimum performance. Looking to tow your boat or trailer to your next adventure? No problem. The 2021 Ford Ranger can handle that too and has smart technology like Bliss with trailer coverage to assist changing lanes and makes driving so much better when towing your boat or trailer. Visit your nearest San Diego County Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com to learn more. That's buyfordnow.com and they'll be glad to hook you up. Many 
years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Track, the East Cape of Southern Baja, and built now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Famas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer Resorts have become a destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. This is the wheel Southern California saltwater anglers have been waiting for. The new Shimano Torium 40 HG. From casting wahoo bombs while long-range fishing, fishing local tuna or rockfish, the new Shimano Torium 40 HG should be part of your arsenal. With more capacity, more power, and an amazing 31 pounds of drag with Shimano's carbon drag system, nothing rivals this addition to the Torium lineup. Captain Ben Florentino of Coastal Charters says Shimano engineered Torium for the way we fish on the West Coast with casting gear on conventional tackle. Torium's power and fishability are rooted in its body. A rigid all-metal Hagane body encases Torium, delivering both stiffness and impact resistance. Angler's actions are transformed directly into cranking power. Torium's S-Compact body design makes it easier for anglers to control hooked fish in critical situations. The new Shimano Torium 40 HD is now available at your local Shimano dealer. Grab yours today. 